to this review of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, the fairest pantomime in the land performing this Christmas at the Mayflower Theatre Southampton. Staged by Crossroads Pantomimes, this was a night full of magic and mayhem featuring masters of the art. The show opened with pantomime royalty Christopher Biggins gliding in as the man in the mirror in what has to be one of the campest entrances. Glittering in a mirrored suit and embracing the audience, Biggins was an immense presence. His self-deprecating quips and infectious laugh were joyous. It's clear, however, he's not as mobile as he used to be, and after spending the entirety of Act 1 quite detached from the action sat in the mirror, it was a relief when he came to the ground in Act 2 to participate in some brilliant slapstick comedy. It was lovely to witness a man so iconic and a legend of his craft. The charismatic Ashley Banjo played Prince Ashley alongside diversity as his royal guards. These guys were effortlessly cool and despite their immense talent, never took themselves too seriously. The routines were of course breathtaking with expertly choreographed flips and leaps, including an inventive rewind section. Their thrilling acrobats fitted surprisingly well into the storyline and elicited continuous gasps from the audience. Kev Orkin proved himself to be one of the UK's finest entertainers, as stated in the programme. The comic glue to the production, he played muddles and was hilarious, entertaining with quickfire gags and superbly timed physical comedy. His interaction with the audience was second to none. Each entry to the stage, he would pick on one poor chap, Alex, to shout, hello muddles, yippee, which was highly entertaining. He was able to hold his own in a humorous dance-off against Diversity's Perry Keeley and was even flipped upside down later in the show. Orkin's pianist talent was also displayed in an Elton John I'm Still Standing number, in which he admits he learnt the track from a CD with scratches on it and proceeds to play and sing the song as such, which was wonderfully clever. Ultimately, he was one of, if not the best comics I've seen in pantomime. Rachel Stanley played the suitably devilish Queen Dragonella, while it would have been great to have seen more of her, she wowed with her vocals and malevolent aura. A highlight scene was the poisoning of Snow White's apple, in which Stanley impressed with a rendition of Steps, Scared of the Dog, with a seamless transition into the old hag. Kirsty Ingram played the titular role, sporting an angelic singing voice and capturing that 1950s star quality. Her character also felt contemporary, however, ensuring the audience she could look after herself and subverting the classic story, in which she does not eat the poisoned apple, but rather Banjo's Prince Ashley did, which made for a refreshing twist to the story. Entering the stage on a train to the classic High Ho track, the Magnificent Seven were a joy to behold. Led by Jamie John as prof, the Seven really brought the story to life and it was lovely when they came into the audience. I appreciated the show for hiring actors with dwarfism, rather than people shuffling about on their knees. The 10-piece ensemble delighted with Gary Lloyd's more traditional fast-paced choreography. They wowed in glittering costumes, adding to the visual splendor of the production, even tap dancing as polar bears at one point. The show featured a handful of meticulously crafted side-splitting routines, led by Kev Orkin's muddles. Memorable moments included an ill-fated sword fight practice between himself and Prof, in which he flocked to Laura in the audience to kiss his various wounds better. A humorous quiz show segment alongside Queen Dragonella, a sing-along of his Felt Smart song in which three children from the audience came up on stage, which as you can imagine descended into tongue-twister chaos. And most memorably, the If I Were Not A Royal Guard number alongside Diversity's Ashley Perry and Jordan. This was choreographed to absolute precision an excruciatingly funny routine, the most energetic and chaotic I've ever seen it performed. It was enhanced all the more by Biggins crashing the song in unflattering drag costumes, such as a nun from The Sound of Music and Pamela Anderson in Baywatch. The skit brought the house down. Pantomime simply does not get better than that routine. Incredible. Snow White was a spectacle, featuring a flying sleigh with moving reindeers before the interval, as well as Queen Dragonella's fire-breathing dragon, both of which flew out over the audience courtesy of the twins' FX. This paired with frequent pyrotechnics and falling snow in the auditorium made for an enchanting and jaw-dropping pantomime. The set was beautiful and had a regal quality, having originated from the London Palladium in 2018. Alan McHugh's script was impressive, balancing comedy and story beats nicely. The pantomime took many elements of Disney's 1937 Snow White, 
such as a joyous rendition of Whistle While You Work, featuring animal puppets and singing bunnies. Tom Sutherland's direction was pacey and fluid. Nothing felt like filler or overstayed its welcome. The show felt classy and well polished. It was wonderful to have a live orchestra led by Anthony England, who carried the audience on a musical journey through the show's 16 scenes. To conclude, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs represented all that's great about pantomime. A strong spellbinding storyline capturing Disney's original tale, impeccably designed comedy routines and superb audience interaction, iconic legends of the genre alongside contemporary dance numbers, and to top it off, stunning music, visual effects and set design. Although some felt underutilised, I had a blast with this production. I give Southampton's 2023 pantomime Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs a four-star rating.